Joining me now, my great friend Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief and author of the great new book called Inflation, which I have read and which unfortunately is playing out in real time. Hello, Steve Forbes. So you think some adult's going to go in and tell Biden he's got to get rid of his staff, get rid of progressivism, put in Joe Manchin instead? Uh, the, the answer is... <laughs> I'm sorry. No, how about putting you in chief of staff? Manson would be perfect. But, but, yes. but uh, yeah, was, uh, the last senator who did that was uh, Howard Baker, remember, back in the late 1980s. Oh, with, uh, for Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Ah, and, uh, good uh, point. Aren't good just point. scandals. Mm -hmm. But nothing's going to really change until the elections. That's the only message that's going to sink in. And actually, the White House is such in a bubble mode right now, they actually think they're doing a good job. Translation is transitory. The reason why it's uh, bad it is, is because we didn't pass big spending bills. Yes. We didn't pass tax increases. Yes. And on and on and on. They have their excuses. And you can tell they're not changing by the personnel they continue to appoint. Mm. And uh, the regulations, you mentioned some of them. Imagine putting on new regulations or reimposing the pre Trump regulations on infrastructure mm -hmm. when you think that would stimulate the economy in their thinking. Yet they're going to make it harder. And they say, we want to lower gas prices. Well, not allowing a drilling is not the way you're going to increase supply. We're probably down, what, three or four million barrels a day mm -hmm. that we would have had if we'd continue with the old policies. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that make prices a little better at the pump? That's way too easy. It's way <laughs> too sensible. You know what's amazing to me? From the president on down, including his spokesperson, Madam Saki, who I guess is about to leave for, I don't know, greener pastures, whatever. But she's always saying, you know, about leases. There are all these 9,000 leases and this and that, which, by the way, is a vastly inflated number. But they don't understand or they don't acknowledge it's permits that really matter. You can have many leases as you want, but if you don't get a permit to drill or to pipeline or to, as I call it, infrastructure, and this goes for bridges, roads, and tunnels. It also, ironically, will go for um, wind turbines and things of that sort. Permits are everything. And that's what the Interior Department will be stopping. I mean, they're going to walk away from the leases. But the reason the leases weren't used is the all people know they'll never get a permit. Well, in contrast that to the private sector. In Texas, for example, if you have a, a lease, it takes, what, two, three, four days to get a permit. Federal government, at best, months. That's the contrast. One area, you're going to get it. You can do something. Federal government, they're just going to strangle you. You put in money, you're never going to get it back as this long as this crowd is in. And now it's going to take years, years and years and years because of these new NEPA regs. Steve Forbes, has inflation peaked, as some Wall Street people are saying? Peaked? Uh, you'd have to get it down to zero before people felt relief. So it's, it's, it's like saying uh, you're in tense pain. Well, tomorrow you may be in a little tense pain, but you're still hurting. Mm. Prices are still going up, and that's the thing. And business margins are getting squeezed. And homeowners, you may say, well, the official inflation rate is down. But when you get that mortgage reset because of your floating mortgage going up uh, several hundred or thousand dollars a month because interest rates have doubled, uh, tell them inflation has peaked and you should feel better about it. You know, what? it's so interesting to me. Wall Street loves to find out. I mean, look, I'm an optimist, too. But sometimes you have to be much more realistic. So you've got these two important inflation releases. You've got an 8.3% CPI and you've got 11% PPI. I mean, that's a long stone's throw from a 2% Fed target. And I just want to add, Steve, I don't see, I mean, you tell me, is the Fed pulling cash out of the economy? Are they taking excess money out of the economy at this point yet? As of last Thursday, no. Yeah. I'll see what their balance sheet mm -hmm. is today. Mm -hmm. But the telling thing is the reverse repos, which just means the Fed creates the money and then borrows it back. Mm -hmm. February 2021, zero. Last week, $1.85 trillion. That's something. So yeah. they're still creating the money. They still haven't really uh, tried to uh, reduce it. And the whole way of fighting inflation in their mind is still, you've got to slow the economy down. I was reading an article in the paper today that maybe people staying at home means the economy has more uh, room f before it overheats. What's this overheat stuff all about? You're doing well? Oh, my God, I'm sweating. I thought take, you take, knew. Take away, take away my money. Growth is inflationary, man. <laughs> too many people working, too many people earning, too many people prospering. All that is terrible. It's it, it, just nonsense. <laughs> what know. they should realize is inflation means the value of the currency has gone down. 
stabilize the currency, stabilize the dollar, treat the dollar with respect. Mm -hmm. By golly, it's amazing what will happen when people don't have to worry about the value of money and they can focus instead on increasing the value of doing things in the marketplace. Well, they're going to have to drain reserves. There's no two ways about it. They really haven't started yet. We'll learn more at their next meeting. And the meeting. key thing is make the announcement stabilizing the dollar so people know that you're not trying to tr crash the economy. Mm -hmm. When they say soft landing, which usually means a, a, a crash landing, that's why I hope no Federal Reserve governor ever becomes a pilot, because I wouldn't want to go on that plane. And, and, and so uh, announce that you, you understand what inflation is. They don't. They could use, I mean, this is something we've talked about, but it's worth another talk. They could use commodity indexes, including gold, to figure out whether they're draining enough money or not. It's not that hard. I mean, really, it's a classical prescription, which would not require a recession. But I'm going to ask you the final words here. The behavior of the stock market is very bearish right now, Steve Forbes, as you know well. And I was just walking through some of these key sectors. Uh, year to date, tech has lost 25 percent. This is pre-inflation. Um, SOX index, the chip index is down 29 percent. Home builders are down 36 percent. Retailers are down. 31 percent consumer discretionary uh, down 30 percent. I mean, it's all, to me right now the market is beginning to forecast a recession. What do you think? It's fear, the unknown, that the people, the doctors, so to speak, are still guilty of malpractice. Mm. They haven't diagnosed what really ails the patient. That's the thing about inflation, which we tried to explain in our book, inflation. Rising prices are a symptom of inflation not the cause. And the danger is people fear not only are we going to get more regulations, but price controls. Desperate politicians do Which desperate things. Which is what the progressives love. Price controls, antitrust, more spending, more taxing, more regulating, more central planning. Seriously, Newt Gingrich is right. Big government socialism. And this, they disdain free enterprise capitalism. And this is where the Republicans are actually doing these people, I was going to say something worse, uh, a favor. If they actually got their wish of that spending, those taxes and the other things, you would find a real depression. Mm. How would that affect their election prospects? Has progressivism ever succeeded? Serious question. Serious question. No. They always have to pull back. They always used to cite Scandinavia. Remember Bernie yeah. Sanders? Yeah, yeah, And, uh, and how, how did they originally get rich countries like Sweden? With free enterprise. Mm. Then they went the welfare route. Then they had to make reforms, start cutting taxes again, start getting government spending under control to get their economies back on their feet. So I wish they wouldn't call it progressive. Uh, it's regressive. It's trashing rather than building. It's anti-growth, it's anti-prosperity, it's socialism. I mean, Gingrich is right. It's big government socialism. Modern socialism. Controls. Ab absolutely. Right. That was your point. Over the, the, modern socialism means they just regulate everything through Washington. They don't have to that's take you over. Doing. They just make your survival dependent on them. Joe Bad Manchin, stuff. chief of staff, man. That's what I want. He's, he's the he's best. He's probably looking he why chief of staff. He probably wants to appoint a chief of staff. I know. Well, I'd like years. that, too. <laughs> I'd like that, too. Senator Manchin, hear that? <laughs> From the great Steve Forbes. Anyway, Steve's book is called Inflation. It's a good read. Please do it. 